we want to simplify the following expressions. If we need the rules for exponents, they're provided here in red. Looking at our first example, we have two x to the fifth raised to the zero power. Well, this one should be pretty straightforward. Looking at our exponent rules, a to the zero is equal to one. So anything raised to the zero power is always equal to one. Looking at the second example, we have negative three x to the negative eighth times four x to the fifth. Well, negative three x to the negative eight means negative three times x to the negative eighth, and four x to the fifth means four times x to the fifth. And we know we can change the order of multiplication and not change the product. So if it's helpful, we can write this as negative three times four times x to the negative eighth times x to the fifth. This is called the commutative property of multiplication. And now it's a little bit easier to see that we'd have negative twelve and then for x to the negative eighth times x to the fifth, since the bases are the same and we're multiplying, we add the exponents. Negative eight plus five is negative three. So we have x to the negative three. But we can't leave it like this because we're not allowed to have negative exponents in a simplified expression. So now we use this rule here that says a to the power of negative m is equal to one over a to the power of m. In the more general sense, if we make this a fraction by putting it over one, if an exponential expression crosses the fraction bar, it's going to change the sign of the exponent. So if we think of this as a fraction over one, we can then move x to the negative three to the denominator, and it'll become x to the positive three. So this simplifies to negative twelve all over x to the power of positive three. Looking at the next example, we can't find this product until we first square five y to the fourth. And again, we can think of this as five to the first y to the fourth. And we have powers to powers, so we're going to multiply the exponents. So we'll have five to the second power. Y to the four times two would be eighth power times y to the tenth. Well, five squared would be twenty-five and then y to the eighth times y to the tenth, we're multiplying, the bases are the same, so we're going to add the exponents, so we'll have y to the power of eighteen. Looking at our last example, we'll simplify this in three parts. We'll first deal with the quotient involving base a, then base b, and then base c. It'll probably be helpful to recognize that this c is going to have an exponent of positive one. And since we have three quotients here involving the same base, we will be subtracting the exponents. Notice how it's always going to be the exponent of the numerator minus the exponent of the denominator. So we're going to have a to the power of negative seven minus three, that's negative ten, b to the power of six minus negative two, that'll become six plus two, that'll be eight, and then c to the power of one minus three is negative two. So again, if we think of this as a fraction with a denominator of one, we can change the sign of this exponent here and here by moving them to the denominator. Notice how the b has a positive exponent, so it's going to stay in the numerator. So we'll have b to the eighth in the numerator. And the denominator is going to be a to the tenth and c to the second. I hope these examples were helpful.